MATLAB is similar to languages like C, C++, Java, Fortran, and other languages like that in that it is a high-level language. However, MATLAB is different from these other languages in that there are some things that are much simpler in MATLAB than in the other languages. Uh, MATLAB can be likened to driving a car with an automatic transmission, whereas these other languages are more like driving a car with a manual transmission. It hides some of the, the details from the user in such a way that it makes it simpler and more straightforward to use. Some of these details can be accessed if necessary, but they don't have to be if you don't want it to be. So as an example, in MATLAB, if you want to assign a value to a variable, uh, it's a straightforward operation. You'd simply say x is equal to 3 plus 4 times 50 to do this particular math calculation. Hit enter and it calculates it and assigns a value 203 to x. If you were doing this in a language like C, you would first have to declare x as a variable and indicate the type of variable that it's going to be and then you would assign a value to that variable. In MATLAB that's all done in one step. Another thing that makes MATLAB different from some of these other languages is that the most basic type of variable in MATLAB is an array rather than a scalar variable. So in MATLAB I can create an array variable by doing something like this. x is equal to 1, 2, 3 on the first row and then 4, 5, 6 on the second row. If I hit enter you can see what has been assigned to the variable x. x is a 2 by 3 array of numbers. If I were to make this assignment in uh, C or C++ I would have to uh, write this as a an assignment stepping through each individual location in the array uh, within a uh, nested loop, uh, two loops nested. So I can also do operations on these arrays at one time using a single command. So let's suppose that I want to take the square root of every number in the array x. So I say y is equal to square root of x hit enter, it calculates the square root of each individual element and assigns that to another array variable y. I can do other things like square every value and it squares every value in x and assigns it to the array variable z. I use dot caret instead of caret because in MATLAB uh, x squared means multiply two matrices together and you would get an error message because these x is not conformable with itself. If I want to know how big x is I can type in size of x and it tells me that it's 2 by 3. Another thing that that you can do in MATLAB very simply is if you want to store a value at a location in the array that where and the location doesn't currently exist, MATLAB automatically increases the size of the array to accommodate the new value. So if I want to store a value at location 42, I can just say x of 42 is equal to 20. And you can see now that MATLAB has automatically increased the size of x, has added just enough rows so that the new value can be accommodated because I need now I need four rows to uh, put the 20 on this in the second column. MATLAB does that automatically you'd have to allocate a new variable assign the old variable to the new variable through a doubly nested loop and then assign that one value and then deallocate the old variable if you were doing this in C. Another thing that MATLAB does is it allows you to create a sequence of commands and put them in a script or a script file 
if you want to automate a series of steps that you have to perform over and over, you can put those commands in a script and it will run them over and over. A, a script does not accept input arguments or return output arguments. It, it simply acts as though you have typed those commands in to the command window. So the, the variables that it uses are the variables that, are, that already exist in the workspace that's shared by the command window and whatever variables it creates are created in the same workspace that's shared by the command line interface. However, you can also extend the capabilities of MATLAB, MATLAB using MATLAB functions. A MATLAB function is similar to a function in other languages. It has input arguments and it has output arguments. Here's an example of a MATLAB function, a simple function that creates a triangular waveform and then returns both the waveform and the time base. So the name of this function is try and notice that the the name of the file is also called try. You will put in MATLAB ordinarily you would put each function in a separate file name where the file name is the same as the function name with the extension .m and they're called m files. So this function passes in variables t, ts, and l and uses those to compute a time base t which is one of the output variables and then from that it computes x, a sequence x or a, a vector x and then it returns both of those. So if we want to call this function, call it like this, then if we want to see what it looks like, plot the function. And this shows us another thing that MATLAB can do that um, other languages don't do because MATLAB has uh, an interactive component to it where you can type in commands into the command line interface and then you can interact with various types of graphical output. And here's a plot. This plot in this plot you can zoom in on a portion of the plot if you'd like to see what it looks like up close. You can move it around to see other parts of the plot. You can also get more details on what a particular point value is like this. So MATLAB has several capabilities that are not available in other high-level languages like C, C++, Fortran, and Java.